All right, guys, hope you're all having a really nice day and hope I'm not about to ruin that for you. Uh, Cause recently I've been seeing some AI photography images and let me tell you, it is terrifying what AI is kicking out at the minute. These like these programs like Mid Journey and I think the other one's called Dali or something like that. Um, you type in these prompts like, or oh, woman in a doorway shot on Leica 50 mm lens 1.4 or something like that. And it'll give you photos that look like that. Um, and it's really, really, really good. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, explain my thoughts on it. And everything you're going to see from this point on in the video is going to be an AI generated. Um, I, I, it's not really a photo, is it? An AI generated image that is supposed to look like a photograph. So yeah. I've seen a lot of people online who seem very concerned about this and I've also seen people online who are extremely excited about the potential. First off, it's important to note that we have already had AI helping our photography for the last few years now. For as long as I've used Lightroom, there's always been an auto setting on the exposure panel. Spot Heal uses AI to erase bits of your photo that you don't want and it's really helpful. If a studio backdrop has marks on it, they can be easily edited out. If there's a person in the background of your photos, they can disappear in a single click. In current versions of Lightroom, Smart Masking uses AI algorithms to select parts of your image, saving you a ton of time when it comes to editing. That's only one step away from the program actually editing that part of the image for you. Sky replacement in Photoshop means you don't even need to worry about the weather, and smart liquify tools can change human faces with just a few clicks. While AI is not exactly editing these photos for you, it's definitely given you a massive helping hand. Now, on to Mid Journey. The latest versions of Mid Journey can create absolutely crazy, authentic looking photographs in just a few seconds. And jokes about AI not being able to create human hands will soon be looked back on and laughed at. It's not perfect, but it's getting very good, and it's massively improving in the space of just a few weeks. In its current state, I'm not sure we need to be selling our camera gear and finding a new job, but I guess it depends on what kind of photography you love and want to shoot. First off, AI will never tell a genuine human story from a human's perspective. For example, say you have a person who loves to make paper aeroplanes, they spend every day folding them and trying new designs, and they had something that happened early on in their life that led them to the decision to dedicate their life to this craft. An AI bot in its current form will not be able to visit their house, listen to their stories and then communicate that through authentic photos. It'll never be able to go to an event and document exactly how it went, however, it does have the power to create fake images that look a lot like the real thing. I used to work in nightclubs and all the promoters were obsessed with how many people they could get in their nights, how packed it was, and there was even a few years where the main photograph clients wanted was a photograph of how long the queue was to get in. In reality, this is just a bit daft, because all it did was put off people going because they didn't want to stand and wait in the cold, but that's beside the point. AI in its current state has the ability to input a photo and then edit it for you. It could very easily take a photo of a nightclub, even one you've inputted into the program itself, and then add a queue full of people and make a very convincing job of it. This form of deceit can be passed off as innocent and harmless, but it could have much more sinister uses. For example, you could take the face of a person and AI generate a body for that person in any situation you wanted. I'm sure you can imagine how dangerous that could be. And then there's completely AI generated images like the ones you're seeing now. On one hand, it's kind of cool that a machine can just make these, but realistically, there's just going to be a bunch of people who pretend they took photos when all they did was type some words into a box. That sort of fakery can be very damaging to an industry, especially in a society where everyone just wants to be famous. Take TikTok videos for example. How many videos have you watched where it says wait for it and nothing happens? You watch a person putting rubber bands on a melon until it explodes for 60 seconds before you realise it's on a 10 second loop. The melon never pops and the algorithm thinks that you've just watched that video 6 times in a row. These videos are just bait for getting attention online. The creators are milking this to boost engagement. And people commenting saying, I just wasted my time watching this, means people are interacting with the video. So TikTok thinks it's good and therefore shows it to more people. It's all a game to get the most reach and engagement. More attention online fuels the egos of humans, which in a way were hardwired to want. Now think about that in terms of photography. If you were the kind of person who wanted to think people thought you were a good artist or your ego craved being popular online, but you weren't a good photographer. You could just use AI to create fake photographs. You could literally make an entire Instagram, an entire portfolio of fake images that the average person thought were completely believable. Now again, while this might seem harmless, it's actually very damaging to photographers who have spent years at their practice. 
Think about a time where you've experienced something for the first time. If it's something incredible, you're always amazed and in awe of it. However, the more you look at that thing or experience that feeling, it becomes less and less pleasing every time. The painting you hung on your wall becomes invisible after a while. It's not to say that it isn't as good, it's just that we get used to it and stop appreciating it. Now, imagine you're a landscape photographer and that you've just travelled a thousand miles to an incredible location somewhere on planet Earth and you get what you feel is the best photo you've ever taken. The weather was ideal, the light was perfect and you absolutely nailed everything about the shot. You post that image on social media or you try to sell it as a print or add it to your portfolio but people have already seen one million more fake, more impressive and unreal AI generated landscapes so your photo just doesn't stand out anymore. People start to question what's real and what's not and overall it just ends up in complete disinterest. It becomes invisible to people. However, without meaning to sound completely negative, it might have a good effect on the long run, so hear me out. Over the last 10 years, people have become obsessed with chasing images that they feel will get the most likes. I'm guilty of it myself. I've definitely only taken certain photos because I know that it would get likes online and in the process of doing that, I've probably missed out on some really great shots. Recently, I've very much got into documentary photography and I'm really enjoying the storytelling side of photography. Not only that, but enjoying the experience of actually going out and using my camera. Think about the first time you picked up your camera. Did you just sit there and think, oh, I think this will get me so many likes online? Or did you pick it up because you really wanted to go out and explore, take some nice photos and enjoy learning about a new thing? I recently went out to a town called Stades to get some photos for my 2023 challenge. And while my photos definitely weren't the strongest I've taken, I really enjoyed the experience of just going out and shooting. And in fact, if I wasn't doing it for YouTube, I probably wouldn't have posted these photos anywhere. I was more than content with the experience of just going out and having a little adventure. Maybe AI is here to remind us why we all picked up a camera in the first place, or maybe it's here to replace us all. Either way, Midjourney, ChatGPT, the new voice emulating AI that's just been released, all these things are certainly going to change the world as we know it forever. I'd love to hear other people's opinions on this, so feel free to drop a comment down below and let's have a conversation about it. I'll leave you with this final thought. When you pay a human to create art, you're not just getting something that looks nice, you're paying for a human connection, a visual expression of their thoughts, feelings and life experiences they've been through. Yes, a computer can create visuals that look nice, but it can never express how it's feeling by putting paint to canvas, pen to paper, clicking a shutter on a camera or even putting together some chords. Think about your favourite songs, the ones that make you feel something. Do you like them only because they sound cool? Or do they make you feel understood? Do they make you feel like you're not alone in the world and feeling a certain way? It's incredibly hard as a human to relate to an emotion if the emotion was never felt by the creator of the art that you're consuming. Maybe we should all take this as a lesson to reconnect to the reasons why we fell in love with photography in the first place. Finally, I would just like to thank John Taylor for providing the images for this video. I don't have a subscription to Mid Journey, so he has kindly generated these images for me so I can make this video. And he's actually a really good in real life photographer as well. Um, his Instagram is found at, at pushed on stop. Um, so you can go and check out his work if you would like. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like and subscribe. Pick up your camera, go out and enjoy the process of taking photos. Thank you very much. And I will see you next time.